Hey everybody, I just got out of the pool from testing out two new cameras from Sea Life. First is the Micro HD, and I also played and, and got to fool around with its big brother, the DC2000. Let's go over some specs quick. The Micro HD has a 14 megapixel still image. It can shoot HD video 1080 at 60 frames a second. It also has a depth rating of 200 feet. What I like most about these cameras is that they are designed with the divers in mind. These are thought out for people who are taking video and stills underwater. If you're looking for an action camera to use on your bike as you're going on rides and to mount as you're, I don't know, doing whatever you do with action cameras, you know, you want a, a tool that does multiple things, this, may, this is probably not the camera for you. But if you're looking for a rock solid camera to take images underwater, if that's the tool you are looking to buy, this may very well be the best tool on the market for that job. Like I said, I got a bunch of video and stills underwater, and I also brought my GoPro, a higher end GoPro, so that we could compare the images and see how they did. One of the things I also did was I interviewed Matt, a Sea Life representative. Matt, I'm gonna ask you to give me three bullet points. Why should customers buy your products over the competition? Just in bullet point form. Sea Life cameras are the only camera designed to be used underwater. We have color correction built inside of the cameras as opposed to putting external filters and uh, very tough, very bulletproof and uh, perfect for underwater use. These cameras are the right tool for the job. Where you can make something else work, these are designed to work exactly as they should underwater. Let's go over some of the features. Okay, uh, the Micro 2.0 is unique in that it's completely factory sealed. There's no doors, no O-rings, no way to flood this camera unless you break the housing. The charging and contact points for the camera. Uh, they slip right into the bottom of the camera. And this is how the uh, batteries are gonna be charged. You can also download your images through the, cab the cable, or you can set up a Wi-Fi connection with your Android or iOS device and download your pictures through an internet connection that it develops. Okay, how long does it take to charge the battery? Usually about two hours, depending on if you're using a wall charger, a little bit longer if you're using a computer USB okay. or a DC adapter. And you said the battery life is about two hours? Two, two and a, about two hours, yes. Two hours, so if you think about it, if you're on an hour dive, you're doing a surface interval, you could put it on a, a charging unit, and, and you won't fully charge the battery, but you would get enough in to make sure that you get another dive or two in. Top it off throughout the course of the day. There you go. Stills, you get how many uh, images per card? We have two different versions of this. We have the Micro 2.0 32, which at 16 megapixel, this is a 16 megapixel camera, uh, 1080p HD video at 60 frames per second. With the 32 gig version, we're going to get about 12,500 pictures, roughly an hour and a half worth of video. Okay. The Micro 2.0 64 is double the internal memory, 60, uh, 25,000 pictures, roughly three hours of video with we'll the camera at that rate. All right, spend the extra 50 bucks, have more than you need. <laughs> Better to have than not need than need and not have. Exactly. Now the other thing that's nice about this is you can actually dial in uh, color correction. Yes. Uh, what makes us unique with the Sea Life is that uh, we have filters built into the, the camera based on your depth that you select. You can either do snorkeling at uh, surface to 25 feet or diving from 20 feet, 25 feet down to about 50, 60 feet. Uh, it takes the place of doing any type of red filters on the outside of the camera, manual white balances, or the needs for external light sources. All right. What else are we missing? Uh, when you go to start video with this camera, you're just going to hit the video button. And this is what we call our point, shoot, and enjoy camera. There's no autofocus to it. Uh, focal length is two feet out to infinity. Just hit the shutter button and it takes the picture right away. If you start video, you hit the video button on the back of the camera. It starts to record instantaneously. And if you hit the shutter button while video is playing, you capture a two megapixel still picture, saves it as a separate file outside of the video, and doesn't interfere with the flow of the video. So you're getting that amazing shot of the shark. You're getting it on video, and all of a sudden you're going to take some still images at the same time. You've got both at the, uh, at the end of Best the day. Of shows. Let me show you guys this as well. Here's one of the things that you can tell that this is the right camera for the job. The buttons here are large enough, they're piano key buttons, and even with neoprene gloves on, you could easily press your way and, and get through the, the menus underwater. This stuff is designed for divers. It's not these little pin buttons that you kind of need to have a little tool almost to push. You can easily touch these and, and maneuver around the menus of this camera underwater with the neoprene gloves on. That is a wonderful, wonderful advantage of these tools. 
Okay, so having shot underwater with the Micro 2.0 for just under an hour, what are my thoughts? Well, first, let me tell you that I'm more of a video guy than I am a still guy. I love taking video underwater. For me, the still images, they're an afterthought. However, the ability to take video and stills at the same time is a great function for me. Not because I want to keep rolling my video and, and take some stills at the same time. What I found is that doing so caused me to shake the camera and, well, I wouldn't have used those video shots in the final edit anyway. However, to be able to take the video and then just, you know, with a push of a different button, take some stills, made it really easy. I didn't have to go into the menu settings to change modes of the camera. Take a few stills, press a different button to record some video, take a few stills, press a different, you know, it, it just works. And quite honestly, I guess if you're going to shoot video, why not keep shooting video and then knock out a few stills at the same time? Who knows? Maybe that will be the time the fish does something amazing. I found this camera really easy to use underwater, and I was really impressed with the quality of images it came out with. I did notice that the lens got me much closer to my subject than the GoPro did, even though I had the GoPro set for the narrow setting. I count this as a good thing because, quite honestly, I want to get as close to the subject as possible. I mean, I want to see the fish, and I want the fish to fill the frame most of the time, right? However, I did notice that when I was shooting a subject closer than two feet, it was out of focus unless I used the macro adapter, which is sold separately. That includes, by the way, when I turned the camera around and took a selfie. The battery did really well. Like I said, I was shooting for just about an hour and I had plenty of juice to keep going. Some of you might be concerned that this camera does not shoot 4K, and I would argue that you don't need to be. Unless you're going to reframe or, 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 or resize the image, in the editing process, 1080 is a really solid image quality, and quite honestly, most of your viewers are never going to see the difference between 1080 and 4K, unless they're looking at that image on a large screen standing really close to it. I think these are great tools, and they may be the absolute right tool for you in the job that you're looking to do, taking great images underwater. I want to thank Matt at Sea Life for letting me, for talking to me first of all, but also letting me play with their cameras. I want to thank Toucan Dive, a fantastic dive shop in northern Illinois or southern Wisconsin, right almost on the border. Uh, if you're looking for a great dive shop, I recommend Toucan, but I always recommend that you support your local dive shop because they are the ones that are putting on events like this that let you get your hands on the gear that you're wanting to play with and, and are considering buying and really trying it out. You can't do that when you buy online. Support your local dive shop. Have a lot of fun shooting underwater. I hope this video helped. Dive safe.